برشیش ایا هاتی آتیش تکتیوان و سا اختو یک ایو خستینی یا قوتان ایا شا نختیسی نی اوی قنی ایا وجین لنگت شتگ اختو لتو یه اوی اختو اتی قشت اخوی گوخ سا یوهان قدا سا یسکو وجین خستی آقا چطلقی اخوی حق قوتی یاغ چطل آن قاقص خانتن ایا کگختو آقا یو خطنگی ایا ادختل یخی یه اوی اخل خیز ایتو دگا یا قا ایتو یک ای یا ها یو خطنگی دایی تی وان قنین سچ آقو قاقو هستو یو خطنگی گختو سا آخ وان قنین سچ آقو جین یو خطو سا آتلن گد خینخ اقا اوه ککو آق یده ککو شدو قا ووچ این سه قش اخو آیو هان لنگت یسکو قا یتوا سگو قا ایش تو یاگ ککو اقه چکن چیش اوه یا اختو یک اه چکلک اوه ها یو قطنگی ایا ادای نتیجی کن چیش ایا یو هان کن چیش خونه یا اخسایی شکخ ادیخت ستی قا دیکی نا قا یوبک قا سامی یه و اختو یکی اخ تو اسگو ووچین خستی قوا جزوم تو نخی یک قوتی هایدت یه و یک اخ کل چیش ریکپ it's good to see everybody my name is خونه we are going to study Lingit together. Uh, sometimes we're going to listen to the words of uh, the, the old people of long ago. Sometimes we're just going to talk. Sometimes I'll teach you some things. Sometimes maybe some other folks here who know Lingit want to teach some things as well. Uh, wherever you're at, whatever you know, it's really good that you're here. And my deep wish is that you're feeling at ease and peaceful. Uh, we're going to do this with love and with kindness. I'm very thankful. Oh, to you just froze. Yeah, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Go back now. Okay. Oh, are you okay? Okay. It's the Zoom telling me to chill out. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll just do this with love and kindness. We'll just try it out. It's a safe space. It's a good place to uh, just try things, share things, continue on your own path of learning and to build a community of language users and learners. It's really important to use the language. Uh, it's really important to live with it on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, we got about 69 people uh, by my count. Um, so I would like us to get to know each other a little bit. Uh, and, and so what I'm going to be doing is sort of thinking of things that we can cover. Usually like one or two, we usually about two things a night. And if it feels like we're going at a good clip, maybe three. I think starting tomorrow, what I'd like to do is just start out with a bit of a conversation. Uh, if anybody wants to share some things we can get, we can think of some topics if that helps folks. And just listen to each other's speak the language, those who uh, have been at this for a while and would like to share some things. It'd be great if we started off with that. I'll probably share some thoughts. And then, uh, then we'll move into lessons. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is lessons, and then Thursday is a study group uh, led by Nila Toka. And then, uh, yeah, it's just really good to see you all. This is, uh, it makes me happy to be around Shingit. It makes me happy to see folks that want to learn and that want to use it. Uh, ask the questions if you got them, because those will help us determine what kinds of things to sort of focus on as far as teaching goes. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Nila Toka and see if you want to share anything. And then we'll, um, We'll open up to the group for very quick introductions. 
Um, good to see you guys. I feel good seeing you as well. I'm excited that we're going to be speaking Shinget together. My name is Nila Toga. That's my um, Danaka name. My family is Athabaskan and also Iak. Um, now I'm on Shinget land. That's why I study Shinget language. And um, I'll be hosting the study group on Thursday nights. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're 70 strong here, which is great. Uh, but that means we have to limit what we share right now. We'll, we'll do a few things like uh, we'll do some breakout sessions and some other stuff so that we can get to know each other a little bit more. Hopefully, uh, whatever we start with, maybe we'll end with even more. Usually we start with a lot and then we sort of go down and, and so maybe we'll either hold steady or even just pick up some we'll throw our nets out and see if we can pick up some other fishies swimming around out there to come and hang out with us um patty i saw your hand was up did you have a thought or a question it's good to see all of you. Thank you very much. Let's have fun and learn lots. Okay. Yeah. So let's just go one at a time, share your name maybe and where you're from and just one quick thought. It's got to be pretty quick. So uh, we will have chances to get to know each other. And some of us might know each other already. Uh, and if you're pretty new to think it, maybe just, uh, just let us know so that we can um, make sure we keep our eye on you and help you out. I do so too. Hi, I'm Leah. I'm from Sitka. So I'm living on the land of the, the uh, Tlingit people. And I know very little Tlingit, so I am just getting my feet wet here. Cheesh. Hi, my name is Kayla. I'm also from Sitka. Hi, Leah. Um, my Tlingit name is Dathnich, and I am Dathloidi. And I know very little. <laughs> okay, okay. So, squat you have to asak yek mahatsati tukakari ayahat. Hi, my name is Jamie. Um, I'm excited to be joining you guys. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm in Maryland. So it's a little late my time. So if I start falling asleep at the end, someone just kicked me under the table. Um, and I'm just glad to be with you all and to see family and friends on here as well. It's like my mom. Hi, mom. Yay, good cheese. Hosein, you had to asak to Kaadi Ayahat. Jamie's mom. Okay, good as cheese. Uh. Ann Fuller, hot aga, shock lake, you do a sock. I, I have studied for many months, but my trinket is clunky. It's good to see folks here. And I see a hand up. You want to go next? Yeah. Hello, everyone. My English name is Taja, like the Taj Mahal. That's how you can remember it. Uh, don't get confused about the spelling. And my Shinka name is Nelga Kuke. And I'm named after my great grandmother, Annie Donawak of Huna. My family is from Huna. I was raised in Juneau and I currently live on the Denina lands here in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm really excited to see everyone. It's been a very long time. My first language was Shinka. And then, unfortunately, due to the 
the involvement of OCS, I had to stop um, speaking at age five. So I am really excited to be back here. I'm now 31. So thanks. Good cheese. Okay, I see another hand up. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I didn't realize I was unmuted. Gunas Chish, Slinget, Kenach, Kinugek, or Slinget, Kenach, Kinugek, you had to a sock, Taka, Kenach, Michaela Mitchell, you had to a sock, Yet Nahatati, Deshitan, I had. Um, hi, my, in Tlingit, my name is Kinuge. In English, my name is Michaela Mitchell. Um, my family is from Angoon. I am Deshi Tan, but I was raised in Juneau, and I am still here. Sheesh. Okay. Uh, let's see. How about Emma? Hi, my name is Emma Thompson. Um, I am in Sitka. Grateful to be a guest on Kriya Ani, and I'm originally from Minnesota. Just been here a couple of years, so excited to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Chish. And Sasha. Um, hi. Um, my English name is Sasha. Um, Shinkit Couch and Tish. You hot do a sock. Um, I know very little. I. Can I think I can pronounce some like all the sounds. Um, my family originates from Wrangell, uh, but currently I am living in Ohio. Okay, good cheese. Well, let's keep it going. Hi, my name is Ashley. Um, I just moved back to um, Anchorage. I was living in Idaho for a while, um, but I'm, I'm back to be closer to family and my ancestral land. My family is from Yakutat and Petersburg, and I'll get my Klinkit name by my uncle Sam at the next potlatch. So I'm really excited about that. I have no experience with language. Okay, good cheese. And how about Kendra? Hi, um, uh, Kendra So, um, I'm I know just teensy bits and bobs of of Lingit, uh, but I'm working on it slowly but surely. And I am down in Southern Oregon. Okay, huh? Cheesh. And Peter, nice to see. You. Jamai, um, uh, my name's my English name is Peter. My Yupik name is Lukavuk. My family is from Akiak, but I was raised in Shika, Gunakshish, Klinke Ani. Okay, Koyana. And Ursula. Hi, I'm Ursula. I am living on in uh, the Ute territory in southwest Colorado. Um, my family is from Juneau. We are from the Duck Dane Ton in Huna. And um, this is the first time I've gotten to join a language class. So I don't know anything. So thank you for having me. Okay, good cheese. Okay, maybe 60 more to go. Let's keep it going. Oh, Matt. <laughs> hey, nice to see you, Ursula. Um, Damji, you cut to a sock. Uh, Dr. Inton, uh, there hit duck. I have talk hit, uh, cache hit. And, um, I'm really gonna stick with this this time. <laughs> Maybe this is like my third or fourth attempt. I'm making a commitment for sure. <laughs> I'm on my computer all day long, so, uh, you know. It's only a, a short commute to my computer every morning, two to three steps from the bed to the computer. So I'm living in my lit bedroom 24-7. <laughs> and that's cheese. Good to be here. Okay. And who wants to go next? Uh, Satuk. Uh, I'm going to jump in on the family thing. Those are my that's my family that just jumped in and introduced themselves. Um, so, Tukyukhatu Asal. 
Uh, many years I have been studying Tlingit and I make incremental changes and learn more every year. But it is, uh, it's challenging work and I'm thrilled that there's so many people willing to jump in and, and try. Gunachish Hune. Ah, Gunachish. Yekecha. Akdain Tan Shawu. Gunachish. Ah. Ah. Okay. Any other clans going to step up in big groups? <laughs> Just kidding. Karen. Hello. Um, Gunasha Duasak, Sluknahade Ayahat. My family is from Yakutat and Metlakatla on the maternal side. And I currently reside in uh, uh, Chilkut Kwan, which is, um, so this is one word that I just can't seem to get. And clink at the my grandfather, is it Dachchan? A grandfather would be Achlik. Achlik. You um, of the grand. That's the grandchild. Oh, so I'm the grandchild of the. Uh, he's Dachlawedi, and my great grandfather from Chilkut Kwan was uh, Kaguantan. Okay. So. I feel like I'm rich with all this heritage, but I don't know. Um, I've been studying it, but it's not an easy language. And I feel like the more I'm around it and the more I hear it, I hopefully will pick up more and more and more. So, Gunish Chish. Okay. Gunish Chish. Gunish Chish. So I was jumping on after her. My Tlingit name is Eska. I'm having internet trouble today. Everybody's frozen. I don't know if you guys can even hear me, but uh, I saw the aunties jumping on and I just had to say Ah. So John Martin took me by the hand and gave me the name Jock. So um, a, an adoption. It's so nice to see everyone here. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Gunchish, Kayoksatini. Who wants to go next? Maybe down to fifty five. <laughs> Cut. Ah. Any other Kokoton? Peeps out there. <laughs> um, ye dish at seeing ye, you had to a sock, late cock, enough, Millie Hall, you had to a sock, Cockaton Shawu, I had day slink, uh, Koka U, 
Ka Duck Wakada Tsu Yak Duck Ka Hate Ka Hate Ukhu Yayana Hik Ega Kudaka Yamdati. Yeah, there's a big storm here. Gunas Chish Yak A Yusatini Just to cut you, Han. Okay. Let's see. I see Justin with the hand up. All right. Kashai, you hot do a sock. I'm Justin Kita, visiting from Ferndale, and uh, I'm starting beginning Plinket this fall. So just uh, wanted to get started early. Good cheese. And uh, Caitlin. Hi everyone, um, I'm Caitlin. I'm in Los Osos, California on Chumash lands. Shikla Yuha Duasauk. I'm Kiksadi. Um, my mom's from Sitka. She's here, Cindy, Etu. Um, and I'm a Kagwantan granddaughter. And I'm a beginner, and I'm just really happy to be here. See you all. Okay, Mishish, Cindy. Am I doing that right? Maybe I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm not. I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> Having difficulties, I think. We can hear you, Mom. Oh, yeah, we can. Can, can you see me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see you. Um, I'm Cindy Didrickson Styles, and uh, my ancestors are from Sitka, Alaska. And um, I'm new to the Klingit language, but excited to learn about it and learn to speak it and read it. So I'm very excited to be joining everybody tonight. Yuck, hey, good cheese. And let's see, Jesse. Hi, I'm Jesse Williams. Um, also out in the East Coast time zone. I'm in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, but I grew up in Cake and then Petersburg. And uh, yeah, I, I know very little Clinket, but I can I can speak it. I know some phrases and I'm just looking for to, to get a really good handle on it and be able to share it with my kids and find ways of connecting with the uh, culture being uh, this, this far out from Alaska. Okay, it's good to have you here. Uh, let's see, I can't tell, is that Elima Lennox? I don't know if I get that right. I see another hand up. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, um, we don't really know any Clinket, um, but um, my, uh, my dad's family is from Yakutat and we live in Sidka and um, we're kind of waiting to be adopted right now. Um, and if any of you want to adopt us, then feel free to call my mom. That's cute. <laughs> now, so uh, their father is Thunderbird from the Eagle House. And um, they are, they've actually met you before at your Molly from Denali presentation in Sitka. We, res, we, we reside in Sitka and they have learned some phrases with um, the language teacher here um, with some letters and some numbers. So hopefully we can learn from you. Yuck, hey, sounds great. Good cheese. And Jane. Okay, here I go. I cannot speak Klinket. I'm from Orango. And I've been trying for the last couple of years to do the beginning. I think it's a very hard language, but I'm going to give it another try. Um, my grandfather would be Chief Shakes. And um, I know I'm Raven. <laughs> Okay. So Jane Lewis from Wrangell. Okay. Who would like to go next? I saw a lot of Kaguantan. Maybe you want to start the Kaguantan group introductions. Oh. 
Kagwan tan shaw a yachat sheet kadach. Kush yak yo echat would do a saw, Charlie Joseph dood lock, saich sitian. Ah, shea de hain takwaya, yon has a queen, sing it you a tungi. Gwas a nineteen seventy nine dach kunach a kuak. Um, ach jideh anida tan yu han sheet gadach a gwas wush teen gach tu at um, think it yu atun gach tu practice. Gunas chisha eight yis ahi. Yake can chisha at. I do such a yit at ho. Who's gonna go next? But yeah, it will you could do a sock or you can if it's a teeny the cat car too. Um, coin link, you had your tea or claw a lagoon you do a sock, uh, you need a short. Uh, my English name is Joe, I live in Whitehorse, and uh, yeah, I've been studying with Lance for years, so uh, and a lot of other people here. Yeah, it's great to see everybody. Okay, good to see Connie. And John. Hi, uh, my name is John. I'm new to Sitka again. I saw a presentation in 2018 at the library uh, and was intrigued. And since then, I was back in Anchorage and Seward and other places. Uh, I'm very interested in Clinket language as an expression of the land and of the people uh, within each other and in the community. And it's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to tell us who you are? Um, my name is Virginia Oliver. I think it name is Juan Lane. I was born and raised in Wrangell, although my name comes from Cake. Hey, Virginia. Hi, Jane. Hi, hi. <laughs> okay, Alicia. Agakusi, a hut to a sack. Um, yes, my hut tea, a tuck dain tan hut city, tuck it dach I hut. Take away or take away the idea I had. Um, she could quandach I had, could snoo quandach I had, Hi, my name is Agach Kusi. My English name is Alicia Duncan, and I am Tuckdain Tan, and I grew up in Sitka, and now I'm in um, Calipuya land in Oregon for school. Okay, good to see the, the Tukhti and Tan might have the numbers so far. Seems like the majority. <laughs> Good as cheese, uh, Tim. Ganach aya ya ada yidu asach. Ganach hari chasiti. Kichkaran aya chat. Yech na chasiti. Nuxian chasiti. Hello, my name is Tim Flannery. I'm Ganachari. Uh, my name means Watcher of the Ganachari. And uh, uh, our, our clan comes from Kowak, the Mink House. Uh, we are Ravens. Yeah. There's a really interesting uh, interchange that I see between uh, Kuh and Nuxiyan. Uh, 
usually Nuxian is a, a mink and Kuh is a marten. But if you look at, even in the stories, sometimes they'll just switch them back and forth, which is really interesting. Because you see that as well sometimes in terms of like the mink house or the marten house. And I, I just think it's really neat because it's hard to even tell the difference between the two unless you really know what you're, you're like if you study them a lot or if, you are, if you're a trapper or something. Uh, I think I, I went into some building and they had these little paw prints. I was like, oh, I think these are Martin prints maybe. And so I asked the people at the, it was like a park service building. I was like, hey, are, are these Martin? They're like, we don't know. And then they just like walked away. So, but it, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, so Nuxian is also said Shukshian in other places. But I, I think there's a really close relationship between those two. Uh, that Nuxian is one that helped Raven out in a lot of the stories. Um, and then yeah, Kuch is, uh, is a, thing, a lot of things named after that one too. And Chish, uh, Ashlyn. Ashlyn. Oh, and I know crazy, uh, I guess, and that star. Of, uh, language. Yuck, hey, Kanchish. And Hayake Sigut, Guthrie. Hey, can you hear me? Uh. Well, I'm calling in from Cloak, and I was super excited that my cousin Tim introduced himself, and he's there, because I'm calling from the motherland. I'm calling from Cloak. So this is where I'm from. I'm Kanakadi, and I got to study with Robbie, and she's <clears throat> convinced me that I'm ready to be intermediate. So I'm looking forward to this coming month. And I just want to gain some more insight before all that happens. So I'm just happy to be here. Okay, goodness, cheese, shake your satini. And how about uh, Lisa? I got a message from Lisa. Hi, my name is Lisa Emery. I'm in Portland, Oregon. Um, originally from Juneau, Alaska, and my family is uh, Daniel Cooklan and Priscilla Sue Cooklan. Uh, from uh, originally from Cloak and uh, Yanyadi. Ganeshis, and I know very little Clinket, like none. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, Ganeshis. Uh, and let's see who hasn't gone yet. Anybody want to go? Just tell us who you are. Ah, Tlaitriidi. Uh, Ray Imel, and for purposes of class, uh, um, I'm a perpetual beginner, always happy to be here with 71 other beams of sunshine. So good to see you all. Uh, Isabel. I think you a tongue, you had to a sock. Uh, Isabel Carter, late clock, a nach kagwantan ayachet. Uh, my English name is Isabel Carter, and um, my Shingit name is Kwadzi. Um, I was taught by Robbie or Kukiek for like four years. Um, and since then, I've moved out of Sitka. Um, so I'm kind of just, you know, catching up because <laughs> I've kind of lost it a little bit, which is sad. <laughs> Is it our turn again? Ah. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jody Mitchell. I serve on the Sea Alaska board, and I'm also the uh, CEO of Inside Passage Electric Cooperative. Um, I'll try to introduce myself and think it. Think it. Kinach stick tin you had to a sock. Yes, the hat to tea. Deshitan ayahat. 
Yehit Ayachet. Norwegian Yeti Ayachet. I think that's about all I know. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm glad to be with you all. We're having a uh, family birthday party tonight, so I'm sorry I'm not on my own connection, but I'm listening in to Michaela's uh, Kinu Gakes um, uh, Zoom so I can not miss anything. But it's good to see all your faces. Okay. Birthday person. May joy be with the birthday person. Uh, Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine. I've been living on Lingit Aini for um, the better part of a decade. Uh, I'm a new mom, so if my camera goes off, that's probably why. Um, but very interested in uh, Clinket and excited to be here. Thank you. Cheesh and congratulations. That's a lot of work, but uh, congratulations. Wonderful. Preston. Hi, um, my name is Preston. I am from New Hampshire on the East Coast. I just moved here to Juneau uh, a couple months ago. So I want to learn the language now that I'm here. Okay, good cheesh. Doug. Hi, sorry, I just joined uh, a little late. It's, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a linguist studying various indigenous languages in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, I've been worked on, worked my way through the down but beginning Clinket and uh, would like to practice it some more. So, hi everybody. Okay, good cheesh, hati guti, hikecha. Hoots Morton Fagan, Achish, you do sagun. Hucha. Yak a good cheese, shik ech satini. A gay beat hoha. Hi, my name is Gabe Canfield. I am from Ketchikan, Alaska. I'm 22 years old. Um, I've lived there my whole life. I was born in Fairbanks, and I'm actually a Nupiak but I also would love to learn Clinket and being on Clinket Ani. I am really excited for this. Um, something that me and a friend came up with together, which I use a lot now is uh, combining thank you in a note back and in Clinket by saying Kwanalchish, which is Kwan Nick and Gunalchish together. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> One of my language teachers was uh, by birth, she was a Nupiak. She was raised by a Tlingit family. So she was a Tlingit speaker from birth and she was very good. She was very good. It was Vita Davis. Okay. Who hasn't gone? Anybody else want to say hi? Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm Sharon. I live here in Ketchikan. And I'm new to Clinket. I've been beginning for several years and haven't gone past it. My name is Yeth Yeti Claw. Um, I'm out of Cake family and we're Kik Saudi. And so I'd just like to be able to learn how to introduce myself proficiently in my language. Yuck, hey, good cheese. Yik tu tu, Yeth Yake you kwasatini. Yik ditu, you hut to a sock. Yay, I a hut, Ganak Tedi, I a hut. And um, I'm originally from Deshu, Haynes, uh, but I grew up in the lower 48, so trying to reconnect with my culture. And um, so I'm trying to keep both, keep my toes in the water this past year uh, with these amazing online classes. Kind of sheesh. Um, so yeah, I've um, and now little did I know um, 
I would end up living on the Canadian side of the border. So I'm here in Alberta studying Klingit from um, another time zone. So, and it's great to be here. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Kathy H. Um, I am I live in Gustavus on Huna homeland. Um, I am a I really identified with a perpetual beginner phrase and my connection is not great so I'm not turning on my video. <laughs> um, and I'm very excited to be part of this. Yuck a cheese and I see Layla was that right? Some other hand up, then disappear. Yeah. Uh, I'm Layla. I'm from Florida. Uh, I have no experience with the language, but I'm excited to be here. Okay, good cheese. And who would like to? Anybody else not go yet? We might be down to 30, 20. Oh, it's each talk. Good. It's each talk. You had to talk. Um, click a in a Colleen. Not too many days till they open the border on one side anyways, so we'll try and flood up your way some. We'll see how it goes. Sasha Gao, Gloria. Great cut, Hinat, Gloria, uh, for a class nickname, Sassy Gao. And I've been studying for a little bit, started with this MOOC last year. And um, in the last class, you talked about how uh, folks were either on the beach or dipping in their toes and, and such. and um, uh, I find as an older learner that often uh, that's true, but the tide is going out. And so I'm, I might be in my toes, but then suddenly I'm on the beach again. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping this class will, will bring the tide in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes that's how it goes. They, we stayed in a cabin that says, we have a mooring anchor. I was like, oh, great. So I tied my boat up to the mooring anchor, and then I looked out, and it was just high and dry on the beach. <laughs> it's like... What kind of mooring anchor is this? <laughs> so, Anyone else want to tell us who you are? It's great to hear from everybody. I could go. Um, okay, Swasatini, Johan. Uh, my name is Jay. I also am in Gustavus. Um, the gateway to sit at the gayi. Um, I also am feel, starting to feel like a perpetual beginner. I've been in a few of um, these beginning classes and uh, love it. And Gunashi Smule and everyone. Ah, okay. That's cheese. Anyone we haven't heard from yet? How? Uh, 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 Francis Demert from uh, Cake. Um, uh, I've been in the language for a while. Um, I still think that I am pretty much perpetual uh, beginner. Uh, it's really awesome to have these little places to converse because I think that's probably uh, the weakest part of my learning skills to date. So really, really appreciative of this. And I'd like to say that uh, kind of a, a, a thought that this is like a plot with the co-hosts because the co-hosts just showed up and they're like biting like crazy. And they got one of their ringleaders leading this thing. And I had to come. So it's got to be a coho plot. Anyway, good cheese. Okay. 
Dus G is ik ergens het hier niet. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Carrie. I'm in Seattle, Washington, um, about 20 minutes south of Seattle, and I don't know much Clinket at all. I know a few words, maybe. Um, I'm also nine months pregnant, so I'm going to stick with class for as long as I can, but I'm going to be in the hospital soon, saying hello to my first daughter. All right. Congratulations. Sheesh. We got three kids. Yeah, a lot of work, but definitely worth it. So good. Yakecha, good cheese. Anyone else, or should we move along? What do you folks think? Could be a couple names I see I haven't heard from, but it's okay. We're not gonna make anybody do anything. Uh, can you hear me? Ah. With, okay. <laughs> so, geez, I'm trying out headphones, these headphones for the first time, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> uh, Justina Hotch is my English uh, name. I'm, uh, I was brought in by the Dakshuidi. My in-laws are the Ganachtidi and the Tukdeintan. So lots of love going out to all of you. Ganachadi Ishkahitan, Kokhitan, and I think, uh, oh, and Ganachtedi, who might be out there too. <laughs> and lots of love to the Dakhtin Tan. Um, and my family is the Lewis family who are Takunedi. And so lots of love to um, all of you down there in Klawak and uh, any Takunedi out there too. I'm going to sheesh. I'm so very grateful. I'm uh, grateful to be joining from Tlauk An. Uh, and um, yeah, Achtelusigo Konach, going to sheesh. Yakecha, sheesh. William. Hello, my name is William. Um, I'm from Texas, but currently I live in Vermont as a college student. Um, I love language and I thought this course would be a good way to enlighten myself on different cultures and identities. And as a writer, I just love to have different ideas and different insights on you know, the different lives that we all live as human beings. And I'm so excited to be here and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Okay, good cheese. Fabulous, wonderful group. Uh, Throw it out there. Anybody else want to go? Tell us who you are. Okay. Gonna cheese to cut you on. Yah, hey, tea. Was I yeah at the tlitzin? That a tea next a high high a tea away. Yew a dat you took what tunk, ya ha you a tungi. Was a hak what tea a witch to cut you on. Yew a chalk. She at the haney ah. Shlinky do a tungi has a shagugan. You dead quarters is a yegu gink. A joy or two yak a. Hasha yet the haney ah, you dead. Yew a two was a go ah, plain coo away. At Hassel, ye here, a hayu katungi. Ye could quati, the cut you horn. Jadasa aya Yanni squain. Ach to us the gukai, ah, go to tucky gee. Ye away, hayu katungi. Ho achaya, Kestasa yak kuki. A joy could a hoe a tina haya tea. Yahayu katangi shitsini. A clean a a he has out the two. Was a two yik a. A eat has what is she? Hai that to a he has the shinu. Yeo Yahayu katangi a ya hatu na go city. Just one conins. Ya katlani heen, 
hintate aya cho aya hintate kakhtu at ye o ha ki qatam di ika khistin kha a wan qalin slatin kha a ti we tal kha ya qatam di ye kakhtu ta qoy bu chin na cho e das wan qalin ska kakhtu a qta sa ya qatam di tin u shu kha kakhtu sa a di Kushti ya khaya wen qanins qaqti ya yisneyi. Hilwasa ka qwati. Hilwasa ha qwati awe. Chaka gakhtu aq. Tlaydihi nuwe we yeil. Ya yakch tiin. Hlingit aani awe aw la yeil. We yakch hiin taadde awe wu qaq. Kende awe wu qaq. Hleo tin. Yeil lewe du jide ka kwach. Yeil kuna khewea ka wa chak. Kaad, ka aan, ka klat, klat ka we au liyech. Yewe ha ye jine ye tsu yaag. Yeil yach. Yekun lchi shewe yisakh wa aakhi. Yaag. Wasa akh tu yek eil. Akhu a yuhan ha yu khatangi adkhi le yeechi. Kuna khewe wu ke. Yewe ka kwati yewe wuhan Llingit Yew ka tangi tiin Ye ka khtu sinne Ye ka kwati ya ha qusi Gul chish yek echa Thank you everybody for sharing It's wonderful just to hear a little bit from each other As we get going And Sometimes we're going to go to the deep water We're just going to it's going to be like we're just going to walk down the bottom of a lake and just hang out because you got to get into the, the deep waters of our language sometimes. I'm very thankful for all the people who've taught me. There's been many, many people who've taught me Shingit and that continue to teach me things, uh, and including a lot of people that, that I've been teaching for a while as well. Like we just learn a lot from each other. We share a lot of information. And it's good. It's good to be in a safe space. It's good to be in a place where uh, some of the things we're going to try to do here is not do a whole lot of correction because we don't have a whole lot of time. And I think what's really important is language production, just trying to use the language, use the language, use the language. And that's not to say that we don't care how it sounds. And that's not to say that uh, um, that we're just going to do things just haphazardly. But it really means that uh, you can discourage someone by continually correcting them. And so sometimes we'll just create these safe spaces to learn the language, use the language, and feel free to ask questions. Uh, there's a bit of an agenda to what we're doing, but we're trying to do a little bit of everything. Some people are pretty new to the language. Uh, so we're going to do a few things for for folks who are pretty new. But then some of the, some folks have been doing this stuff for a while, so we're gonna do some stuff for them as well. But don't, try not to tune out, even if it's stuff that feels like it's over your head, or if it feels like you've done this stuff a million times, uh, cause we'll try to break out into groups and then have some activities and stuff so we can break it up a little bit. But I've heard it said that there's nothing that measures up to our language. So because of that, I feel really good. Uh, a long time ago, there was lots and lots of people who spoke this language, right? In the tens of thousands. And now it's maybe down to 40. And, but we got 70 people here. If, if these 70 people all learn Tlingit, uh, that would almost double the current numbers. Although some of you, I would count in that 40 uh, of Tlingit speakers. And there's folks who have come in and they didn't know Tlingit and a year or two later, they're speaking the language. And so sometimes we'll talk a little bit about what, it, what does it take? Everybody learns in different ways. But I was in a meeting today and, um, and I was just, I'm just continually reminded it's, it's always easier, I think, to shoot arrows at each other than to actually do the thing. So we're gonna focus on doing the thing. Because I think the other thing that happens is sometimes you just, it's real easy also to criticize the process and to 
come up with reasons why you're not doing the thing. And, and the thing is learning the language and using the language. Like using it has to be this central part. If you do not speak Tlingit now, you have to create that space in your life. And, and what you're doing, what we're asking you to do is to just set one more space at the table for the ancestors and maybe one more space for the future generations. That's all we're asking you to do. But it's it's a labor. You got to do that stuff every single day. Talk to your dog or your cat or your plant or your housemate or your partner. Just find people that you can talk to. And so part of the goal of, of the MOOC is one is to just bring learning to people for free. And two is to just keep building this community of learners and users. Because there's a lot of people who don't speak the language, but we wanna create opportunities for them to do so. And then we also wanna make sure that people who do wanna speak the language have opportunities to connect with each other. So we'll be sharing throughout these next three weeks, resources that are out there, including ways to stay in touch with each other and to have uh, conversations and study sessions and other things like that. Because if you're not, you know, not everybody in the world's out there talking about classifiers and the verbs and the, all this other stuff that gets really, really interesting with Shingit. But if you hang out with the people who do, then I think that does, that does help because it's, you got to create this whole reality of people who are living with the language. And also try not to get discouraged. There's a lot of folks out there for whatever reason that try to stop people from learning or try to stop people from using the language or try to, you know, it's, it's hard to say what the reasons are. There's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of other stuff. But we just wanna focus on learning and using Klingit. So I'm really thankful that you folks are here uh, what I'm going to suggest now is we take a five minute break. We'll keep it kind of short. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to ask our advanced learners to help me with an activity. So uh, if, if you've been doing this for a while, just prepare yourself to, uh, to share some knowledge with folks. And it'll make sense when we come back. So come back in five minutes. Yachish. Jock, are you still there? Check. You can send her a text, uh, a chat box. She was answering mine. Oh, it's kind of a conversation, you know, probably about three minute conversation, two minute conversation. Might be a long text. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kasan, so what is your English name? Uh, some guy lives up in Juneau. No, uh, Andrew Williams. Aw. Yeah, so cool. That's it. Aw. I hadn't really met you, so, and I was oh. trying to write down people's clinket names, so. Um, Kaguantan, ayachat, chetsu, achawa. Uh, wutu, wutu, uh, I'm trying to think, we took a class together. Oh, that's why it just sounds familiar then. Oh. Okay. <laughs> It was a, a digital media class. We talked oh. about uh, presentation software and the Blackboard stuff or uh, right. learning management software. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to break into that, I think, and um, most of it went over my head, but some of it must have sunk in because I'm getting better. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to have to get up and walk around. I can't sit for an hours upon hours anymore. Not. <laughs> not good. Okay, in a little while. See you in the
Hussein, can you see your grandson? I, I can. Wave. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. He should be listening to class. Just got in from the gym. He's going to eat real quick and then come join us. Okay, that was a fun five minutes. I get to go tell my kids to get off their video games and they all start yelling at me. So. <laughs> uh, so what I thought we'd do is uh, I'm gonna show you folks an image of a speaker uh, with their name and their clan and then this thing that they said. It's just part of a larger thing that they said. And what I would like is if uh, you've been studying Tlingit for a while, or you're one of these deep water folks, if you could just read it and then talk to us about it and tell us why, what kinds of things are important that are being said, what kinds of things are uh, interesting about what what's in the language there. Uh, so that's what I thought we'd do, just for a uh, little bit of a warm-up activity. Some of us uh, study every day. Some of us take the early parts of the summers off. Some of us are pretty new to the language. Some of us maybe haven't studied in a while, so it'd be good to just get us warmed up here. So. And by volunteering to read it and to tell us about it, uh, you're not bragging or anything like that. You're just stepping forward to do your part in helping us all understand what these folks are saying. So with that, can I get a volunteer to read the Shinget on here and to tell us a little bit about what's being said? Go first. Oh. Uh, Walter Sobolov. Ank a kitan kajakte. Hmm. Well, so, uh, not, <laughs> uh, Juan, Iku Aya Juan. Does that, uh, have anything to do with courageousness? This, uh, when you have like kesh on, it's sort of saying like, uh, I, I guess, lest you never, or don't, maybe don't ever. Uh, like when you have, so there, there's a couple of things, like when you have what's more commonly shish, and then a verb with this underlying K thing at the end, that's mm -hmm. usually saying, don't do the verb. Don't eat it. Um, don't be that way or don't be at that place, depending on how it's being used. Um, 
And so in this case, when you have kesh um, it's just softening the, it's a way to sort of soften the, both either the command or in this case, uh, what we would call, it's the prohibitive. And so it's saying, uh, don't, you, don't you ever do it, basically. So it's kind of like saying, please don't ever do it, maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it might be the closest thing we have, but you, you don't see it used as much. And, and so, um, but yeah, that's a pretty good equivalent. Or culturally uh, saying maybe that, I know you're not my grandchild or nephew, but yeah. I'm trying to tell you this thing that's important. Sometimes I might translate it as, may you never. May you never, ah. It's sort of like, cool. it just sort of puts it up into this, this is really important type of category. But sometimes you could put one on the end of something like, um, you might say something like that. Um, but it, it just softens whatever the command is. But we don't have to use it. Like when we use please in English, we're being polite. So we're expected to do that with people we don't know. And sometimes you get a bit of that with Shinget, but it's more like, uh, for me, if I see it in a phrase like this, it's like he's telling us something really important. Yeah, away. So is a cut ye sawahagu, is that all one verb phrase? Yeah, so we'd usually see it as um, maybe a cut ye sawahagu. That's how we might usually see that. Or a cut cut say will up. May you never not know it? No. Not quite. Don't forget it. Don't uh -huh. you forget it. Don't you all forget it. Oh. So, uh, and Cheesh, I didn't hear who helped. Out there, that was awesome. Ya yuk e at. It is good. This this good thing. Ya uh, shingit ani. The shingit land. Uh, when you, when you get the apostrophe in there. It's the world. Oh. Uh, so does that apply to the T, or is it the beginning of the A? It's it's right at the T. It's right at the T. It ani. I don't know why. Shingit ani would be Shingit land. Shingit ani is the world. Hmm. Ka kudze ti at the way we live, our way of life. Well, you got yeah. So kudze ti is to exist or to live. It uh, depends kind of, kind of how it's being used. There's two forms. One would be for something oh. to exist. I could say, but then there's another form where there's a subject instead of an object. So you could say, oh. I'm living. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, when you have the perfective form of it, it was born. So in this case, the and the commas and the line breaks kind of mess it up. But when you get and there's another neat thing going on here, which is the verbi at, which is something that is that kind of thing. So yake is good. Yake at a good thing. Kudziti is born. Kudziti at the thing that was born. So that's how you turn a verb basically into kind of an adjective. So yashingit anika kudziti at this thing that was born on the world. And a kak a at um aswunehi. Man, that one's right there on the top of my brain. So bad, so I I should know I should know it, but I can't remember it at this moment. Okay, anybody want to help out? These are big pieces of language too, it's okay. 
So again, we go back to the verb wuner. What happened? Not quite. Wune would be so you wouldn't have the X really on there. Wune would be like for something to happen. So it's close, but a, once a saved thing. Yeah. So wune like a. I, I got a little bit of a cold still, but oh. I could, I could say, uh, I'm healing. I'm getting better. I recovered. Mm. I, whatever happened to me, I got better. Or it could it could mean to be saved as well. And so uh, there's a that's the version with only an object, right? And then you can have a version that has a subject. So you could say, uh, you healed me. Uh, and so in this case, but in this case, it's the thing that healed them. It's the thing that saved them. Um, and just knowing and the things that he talked about, he would talk about this a lot, was that like the thing that, he's talking about the thing with language, right? So he's like, don't you forget it this wonderful thing that was born on the world and on the world, it saved them. Uh, another thing that Shingit does is it just uses the them a lot to talk about the ancestors. Uh, it just, it does that all the time um, where there's all of a sudden we're talking about them and it's sort of like, uh, they're like there's so much respect given to the ancestors that sometimes we don't even name them. It's really interesting. <laughs> It's interesting that your translation, when you just said it, kind of is different than the placement of all the words. Like you said the end, kind of in the middle, but it's kind of sort of towards the end there. Yeah, like the, when you just translate word for word and sing it, you end up with sort of like, don't, may you, it's, on, you all, forget, don't. Uh, this good thing, this world on born thing, and it's on they saved thing, right? So it's sort of, you gotta, you gotta do a little. And so those of us who study Tlingit, we do a lot of this shuffling around because one, like we wanna understand how the Tlingit language works so that when we speak Tlingit, it doesn't sound like it's coming from English first. But then we also want to be able to translate it into English so that we can communicate it to someone else. And as we're learning, the English side of our brain is often like, that don't make sense to me. And you got to sort of <laughs> that side of your well, brain for a while. And, and I want to say this is that that's really important to the context of how he's saying this. So it saved you know, it healed, it saved us, are saved. But when he's, if you don't understand the context is about language, you wouldn't get there. And so many times in Tlinget, if you don't understand the context of the story or the environment, you could go a totally different route than what they were intending. Yeah. Um, this, there's this, so many things are assumed. Exactly. And and sometimes it does that too. The, the language does that. Like there's a whole bunch of these things where like, See this, the a cut and a kuch. The a uh in there is it's, it's, it belongs to something. And it, it does that a lot. A da, a kuch, a da dach, or, or what, there'll just be a whole bunch of things to refer back to it. What's really interesting is sometimes that thing's been named 10 minutes ago. And sometimes it's not even named. You're just supposed to kind of understand. And, and that's part of it is a cultural context and part of it is also just sort of how the language works. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know how it would be helpful. And I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of throwing out there what's on my mind. Huh. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be a, 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 you know, picky per se, but just, just noticing when we translate, you know, it takes a long while to get to a space where you can look at all that and go, oh, this is what they must have meant if I'm going to say it to somebody in English. And we're, we're translating it as you asked, but it's only going to be in this, they did 
somewhat to this thing on the other side. So I, it, it might be helpful to, to do that first broken version the way we're trying to say it mm -hmm. and then tran given that translation into English after. Yeah, and Kei uh, Shi, Bessie Cooley, she likes to say interpretation because it's, mm. and, and it might change. Like you could, you could be the one who did the translation work on this and then you listen to it five years later and you're like, you know, I think it's actually more like this thing. It's, it's really interesting the way that stuff works because they're, they're two languages. So they, they work very differently. And then also sometimes as a learner too, you'll go in, you'll be like, oh, how could I have missed that thing? And, and you know, but it, it's, it's just part of the process. And cheese. Ah, you can. Just to cut you on. Here comes the next one. Oh, was there a question? Maybe. Yeah, I had a question about the difference between the ka and the ka, which you both were on, I believe. Yeah. Lost. Yeah, so ka is just sort of generally on, and then ka uh -huh. is a little bit oh. more residing or resting or living. Okay, so it's more lo localized? Yeah, so you can put uh, a suffix on there. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's going to, because you could also have a kach, and that means moving around at or repeatedly coming back to. And you oh. can also have a cut, which is sort of like there and recently arriving there. Oh, yes. man. <laughs> it does have these categories and then so it's just one of those things like you know how do you say it's there you're like well how is it there did it just get there is it moving? Why is it there <laughs> resting there you know but that's it's sort of like um but you know it's 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 always interesting because i, I think those are the finer tuning elements that you get to in intermediate and advanced linguet um and then you see he's using three different versions. So cut, ka, and ka are yeah. same but different. Good question. So, uh, so it, that sense of, the, we're basically making sense of something. And, and one of the reasons that I'm, um, language is the way that we actually piece the world together. So these three senses of on, have a relationship to who is on and why they're on. If I interpreted that kind of correctly, it's like there's somebody who was there, but there was somebody who lived there. Or there was there's those kind of, is that what we're? Yeah, so I think that you sort of communicate those things in very short spaces. Okay. Right? So, and it does get sort of one step more complicated because these are all attached to verbs. And so you're like, okay, when you're forgetting, it's arriving there. But when mm -hmm. you're born, it's there generally. And then okay. when you survived, they were living there. So, you know, it's just sort of like, but then you can, it kind of makes sense in some ways because in Tlingit, when you forget something, like the forgetfulness is really interesting because you're using an object pronoun so that means you're not really doing the verb. The verb is kind of happening to you, but then it also goes on to this thing. So like I could say, you forgot me, right? <laughs> so, but that's another thing that Thinget does is saying like, what type of pronouns are we using and how do we start moving them around? Which is a big part of communicating to say like, I forgot it, you forgot it, don't forget it, we forgot it. And then you start sort of learning how to move those things around too. Okay, cool. It, in, in forget, is there an actual um, subject, an ergative or something? Nope. No, it's just, it's just uh, kind of- a... There could be if you said like, you made me forget it. Okay, you can do causative, okay. Yeah, so you could do that, but that's pretty rare. <laughs> it's a weird, <laughs> weird construction. <laughs> But you, it's more common to say like you made me remember, but the remember is is pretty similar, just in terms of how it usually works. So you get yeah. say, I remembered it, and then the verb mm -hmm. itself changes, but it's still an object pronoun and it's still going on to this indirect object. So as like an oblique object. Yeah. 
pretty fun stuff. Wow. And you know, for everybody, this, he was like 101 when he said this, and we're looking at the words of total Klingit geniuses. So it's, it's okay if it, uh, if it makes us spin ourselves around a little bit, because good stuff. Okay, who wants to do this one? Um, Kune, really quick before you start this other one. Okay. Could you pronounce that clan name? I think I got it wrong. An Akitan. Uh, yeah, so that's the house in the middle of town. They are also they're, they're also called Kinedi. But you know, clans clans very commonly have these. So if you if you're seeing Adi or AD or Wadi at the end of a clan, um, quite commonly that's one of that's a the clan, and then you might have other clans that were born out of that that usually end with Hitan or Tan, uh, which means the people of the house. So on the land or the town, Ak is uh, the middle of or in between. And then hit is a house, and then ton is the people of the house. Okay. Who wants to read and translate and tell us about this? Well, located on it, I got that part. Huh. <laughs> okay. Something about our language. Yeah, our language is in there. Ayu katangi. Huh. Oh, is the ng is it ngi or is it ngi there? Uh, it would end with ayu katangi. Tangi, katangi. Okay. Then kunach kach kunai la gao. No voice tells. That's right. It always throws me off. There's no no crossbar on the L. Yeah, we just we don't have any voice. Well, I don't want to say any, but typically there's none. But we do know of a couple speakers, at least uh, historically, who used voiced L's on the regular, but they would substitute it from an N to a voiced L. So oh yeah, that's they might say something like that. But that was that's very rare. I only know of two ever who did that. Historically wouldn't have been voiced, the words that have L. No, I'm not. Two for songs that were traded to Klingit from other languages. Oh, okay. Haida or Simshian or there, right, the ones that have languages. the voice. Have a voiced L. Uh, so then we have. I was looking in the chat. Shagao is loud, um, but when you put in front of it, it's a little bit different. Anybody else want to help us out here? Fight for it. Yeah, a shagao is a command form. You all fight for it. A shagao. So here's another one of these things that Klingit likes to do. It, so it says it, and then it names it afterwards. That's just something that Klingit likes to do. Fight for it, our language, or literally, it's on, or it's for, fight, our language, right? really fight for it. And then we get Okay. Nothing is as large as or nothing measures up to our language. Yeah. Uh, so I used to work with Shakshani uh, every week. She and I and uh, Kahuan Ish, George Davis would get together and uh, 
it was just a wonderful five, six years when I had a chance to work with them pretty much every week, uh, as long as nobody got sick or was traveling. And uh, one time I asked them how to say, like, fight for your language. And she got really excited. And she just, she said this, and she was really just like, bold when she said it. Um, and so this is how you'd say, you know, fight for your language. And so a kach kunai is uh, fight for it. So if you just said kunai you're just commanding people to fight, right? Like, the, and this is usually like fighting with your fist, you know. Um, but when you put the kach in front of, you know, so something kach, you're fighting for that thing. And then that, that sort of pushes it into a little bit of a metaphor once you sort of do that. Uh, so fight for our language, really fight for it. And I really like the last part because hechdasa is usually nothing. Uh, a yach, uh, so is it's it is like so a yach kuge would be uh, it's the same size. Hechdasa a yach kuge, nothing is the same size. A yukatangi as our language. Right, so it's uh, it was a really just amazing statement to just sort of think about and just to, you know, it's not about like which language is better. It's just saying, if you take this out, there's nothing that can replace it. And I think these are really important concepts for us as we sort of go in, because sometimes it's hard and sometimes we get distracted and sometimes, you know, it's a, there's all kinds of confidence things that could happen, but we just gotta remember like, this is what's at stake, and this is this is what it's going to take. So that's why I like to. I just keep coming back to the things that they shared. So uh, kuge means uh, basically this big or this many. It depends on how it's being used. So like uh, Kinky Steve David Katzik, he named all the the houses of the Shangukidi in Jishkat uh, and Shkut. So in Chilkat and Chilkut, and when he got done, he said, uh, that's how many houses we have. And then one time Nora was talking and she said, that's how big my speech is. And then that's how she wrapped it up. And so um, means this big or this many. Means same size or same number of. Depends on how it's being used. Is that related to the careless uh, word? I don't think so. Okay. But yeah, it's got some difference. But uh, it, it actually might be related to it. That's a really good question. Uh, and that's a really good. It's a really good question because she used to say to me sometimes, "It's just chakugeyi wa yukakatung." It should get all it should kind, of, kind of fired up, you know, because sometimes <laughs> when we do, when people would criticize the work we're doing. You know, she says, I don't just talk recklessly. And I was like, I know. Kwasaku, kwasaku. And um, but yeah, chakugei is uh, an adverb. So if you said that in front of a verb, you're usually saying they're messing it up. They're just doing it any old way. Right. And so. Uh, those are some things, those are good things to really know. Because sometimes you, you should say, you know, he just did it any old way. And it's, it's a, usually a critique of, of their work. But then she's probably like small effort or something. Yeah, like just messy, haphazard, just. Uh, yeah. And so it's a value, it's a cultural value statement. Because in Shingit, you're supposed to do a good job at the thing. Like uh, there was another one. It's a two team. Yeshia um, D. Nathan Jackson shared that one with me, which was go by your own ambition. So he said that's what he was taught. Like if you're, because you know, I was learning how to carve from him and learning artwork, not just pick up a broom and sweep up the wood chips. And he was like, that's what you're supposed to do. You don't wait to be told what to do, you do the thing. And so that's why he was saying that thing. So yeah, there's a bunch of things in Shingen that do have, they reveal these cultural values, which are sometimes like, don't be lazy. Don't wait for people to tell you to do the thing and don't do it recklessly. So you, you'll get a bunch of stuff like that from, you know, the phrases that you'll unpack in Shingen. 
Okay. Good cheese. Thank you. This has been really interesting because my name has obviously part of the word Kuge in it, but my name is really, really old. And so when my grandmother passed, it was her great grandmother's name. And so she didn't know the naming of what it meant. And so it's been very interesting to listen to this. Thank you. And how would you say your name? Nefta Kuge. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it depends on if, so Nate might be a home. Uh, a, if it's an underlined G with like a high long A, a nesh, a kuge, would sound like the, the home is big enough. That was Shirley's guess too, and they were clan sisters, so that's why I've been going with. Okay. Yeah, so a can also come before kuge, which would mean uh, pleasant or enough, um, satisfying. So, yeah, it works like that. Okay. Okay. Who wants to do this one? Come on, cheat, woo. This is deep water, Shingit. I know you're out here. Oh, how about somebody from Tesla? Yes, <laughs> Tuchla, <laughs> Kaha Kusti ye dark ye do ye ne do ye ne ye 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 do ye ne ye ye um it's as if flowers um flowers so shunai la at leading yeah well uh -huh. are leading the way our language and our way of life um, the around at ye ji ne ye the way um, around at our language and our way of life you are working at. Um, yeah, so I just want to take a moment and acknowledge uh, several of these elders. Um, we lost them in the past few years. So, but like just the, the things that they left with us, I think are just so important to just sort of continue to look at and continue to think about. Uh, so a couple of things with this, like when you start with that, you're saying it's as if. If, if you just said uwa ya, it means it resembles something. So you, you could also say ha uwa ya we ka. And you know, that that person looks like me. Right? So whoever it is, it's someone who looks like me. Um, but when you put ch in front of it, now this sort of this is pushing your your own speech into you're letting people know I'm gonna make a metaphor here. And Tengit really likes to do this. So if you're ever asked to speak publicly, uh, these are things you should learn how to do. And as soon as you say chu uya, like everybody, they just know that you're gonna do, you're gonna do something. And if you're one of these master speakers, you're gonna do something incredible. Uh, and then so in this case, flowers, hey de ya at you all are leading them this way right now. So there is a second person uh, pronoun right here, a plural. So you all are leading flowers this direction. Uh, and then there's a big, so those of you who've been studying Klinget for a while, here's the ade and the verb ye. So this is sort of a, a big bookmark type of a thing. It's like these two 
uh, bookends that you might have on a sentence to say the way this thing is happening. That's what the ade and the ye are doing. Hayukatangi kahakusti, our language and our culture. Dog, yeji yanei, the way you all are working on our language and our culture. And here's like another one of these things. Like in English, you would say, I'm working on it. But in Tlingit, you would usually say, I'm working around it or about it. And, and that's just the type of one you're going to use for that. And so these are these are just little things that you're going to find all over with Tlingit where, oh, that's not really in, it's on. Well, that's not really on, it's inside. Yeah, and so there, there's a bunch of stuff that's going to work like that, where there's there's just a whole logic to the language that functions a little bit differently. Uh, but yeah, just an amazing, powerful uh, sentence that she shared with us. So yeah, this is an amazing metaphor and I'm not sure I really understand culture well enough. This trope of leading flowers, is that something that would be from a proverb or a raven story or something that should open up all sorts of doors and I'd like that to happen for me. Yeah, so that, that's a really interesting uh, point. Like, so if you just said like, so you could, you could put something else in here. So you could just say, um, you all are leading us home. So like you're walking and we're following you. So the verb itself is to, for plurals to lead, lead a group by usually by walking, sort of like saying, um, okay, I know, I know the way to the top of this mountain. You guys follow me. So then you would have, um, you would have sh, and you'd probably have sh, but you'd have gut on the end. So one is it's a plural form of walking, and two, this is to lead someone in a direction, right? And so this is also something that can be used for leadership to say like, uh, to lead the way, to, to do something like that. But in this case, yeah, it's, it's a big, it's almost like just the thing that I would see in my mind is she's saying like, we're doing the work and there's flowers growing behind us. It was a beautiful compliment. Um, and, and it was one of the last things that she said, you know, just to sort of put the the pressure sort of on the moment, just to be able to um, just you know, when you when you look at our speakers and see how often they they rose to the occasion. When I look at this stuff, I think, okay, they're calling us out. Who's gonna be the one who steps up in their place? Has to eat uh, you all are going to stand in their place. And, and Nori used to say this stuff to us all the time. She said, it's not going to be anyone else. It's going to be you. And she's saying, sing it, you know, and, and I know it, it adds to the pressure for some of us, but it also, you know, we got to make sure we keep this deep water language. I know it's day one for some, for some of you, you might be like feeling a little overwhelmed, but I just want everybody to see like the, the depth of this language and to sort of see and, and, for some of us who are fairly new to Tlingit, we're gonna take baby steps to get there. It's okay. But when we do a, a MOOC, we'll, we'll some, sometimes we just gotta so, say, okay, we learn how to swim. Uh, ask this Hawaiian guys, how'd you learn how to swim? It's like, oh, my dad took me out on the boat, threw me in the ocean. I said, get back to the boat. <laughs> so every now, we're not gonna let anybody drown, but we're gonna, we're gonna go in the deep water sometimes. Kasang. Uh, just thinking, well, I've got two things. You you mentioned that about swimming in the water. Uh, that's how I learned how to swim. I work at DHSS now. They were asking about, hey, you don't mind if we just kind of throw you into this and not really show you anything? And I explained to them how I learned how to swim. And everyone in the group, well, uh, the effeminate folks in the group all went, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then my boss was like, uh, you realize I, I was recording to this, don't you? <laughs> anyway, um, so as to the deepness of this conversation, I just wanted to add that my my grandfather or my, my dad, um, I always reference my dad as the grandfather to my kids. So I guess that's why I think that way. But my, my father learned how to speak the language 
by his aunties and grandmothers sitting them down at the table where they work. And uh, they didn't say, hey, we're saying this, you need to learn this or, you know, anything like that. And he was so young that he wasn't old enough to go, hey, what's that thing you're saying again? He just, they just made him sit down there and listen. And, you know, he, he became fluent that way. So in that regard, I really like this setup because it's, it's kind of the same thing. We're sitting around a whole bunch of advanced people and some of the stuff you're just going to absorb. It's just going to, one day you're going to have something to say and it's just going to pop up in your head. Yeah, and it's really fun because when you look at the, the words of the masters, like you could be brand new to think it and you learn all kinds of stuff and you could be studying this stuff for 20 years and you learn all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's amazing. I can speak to that because as a very, very beginning, I don't know how to speak anything, but I've just been throughout the last year trying to open my ears and pay attention more. I'm seeing a lot of repetition. And so I totally believe that that is effective just to keep listening and reading. Okay. Yeah. And, and probably tomorrow we'll do a little bit more like, here's how you make the sounds and here's how you just do a basic introduction of yourself. And so we're going to try and cover a lot of stuff over these next three weeks. Uh, but it's not going to be like, we're going to get you from the very beginning all the way. We'll, we'll do a little bit of everything. But the goal is, you know, speak, say your question, you know, share your thoughts, because um, it, it's important to, to know what the old people were saying and to sort of think about we're goal setting. And what our goal is, is there's going to reach a, we're going to reach a point where we're going to speak like these people did, because that's, that's, that's our responsibility. And then we're going to, once we've done that, we're going to teach other people how to do that. And, and so that's, that's really one of the goals of, of sort of the work that I do around Klinget is to get people into those deep waters. But there, there will be times too, like there, there's a beginning clinket class and an intermediate and advanced. And those, those do take sort of a little bit more of a step-by-step -step approach. But when we run like a MOOC, we just want to do a little bit of everything and just sort of keep people interested and, and give them stuff and dangle the fish and say, here's the fish. You gotta go to the deep water, get that fish. A okay. few years ago, SHI had a language summit for elders and I went there and listened for three days and I only learned two words, Yesu and Nooch, because they kept saying them. And that's how it is for a beginner like me that learns slowly, but it worked. I learned those words and I see them all the time. Wow. Yeah, Yesu is like still or just now, depends on what's being used. And then Nooch is like all the time. It keeps happening. It was fun because I was in Hawaii and uh, they were singing these songs. They kept saying Yesu. I was like, what, what is still happening? And I asked them like, oh, that's how we say Jesus. I was like, oh, okay. Those were like hymns. Okay. I get it, I get it now. So um, yeah, but it, it'd be fun to sort of like all those, every speech at that thing was recorded and is on YouTube. So it'd be fun to sort of just go back and listen to them and see what you what else you pick up now, right? Because it's it's really interesting because I I got all kinds of stuff like that where I was like, oh yeah, I was there, but I didn't understand it, but now I can understand it, and it's almost like I'm going there again. It's really fun. All right, who wants to read this? Oh, it's where there we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, my prayer um, will be um, forever let it exist, Slingit. Uh, yeah, well. Okay. So this is uh, Kawu, Zero George. Uh, last one was Jukatin, Jane Smarch, and Shakshani, uh, Marge Dudson, and then Tajakti, Walter Sobolov. And uh, 
Yeah, so ach is my, chagach is a prayer. So it's a noun that's built out of a verb. Uh, so ach chagachi would be my prayer. Yekwati, it will be this. Um, some of you may have learned how to say like wasa'iyati, so that yati verb is to be. So yekwati is the future form of it. Chakaych is forever. Chukakasti is a, what we call a hortative form of the verb. Let it be this way. So in this case, let it live, let it exist. Kudziti uh, is another way this verb is said, or kusti. And then shingit. Uh, so yeah, we were recording him around this uh, table. And Kagwask, uh, Ishmael Hope asked him, I was, you know, Shteotin, Kathy Ruddy was there. She, uh, she drove him around and was his uh, dedicated interpreter. Because at this point, he was, I think, 92. And he couldn't, he couldn't hear anything. Like you could yell as loud as you wanted to and he, he couldn't really hear you. So we would say something, we would ask a question and then Kathy would write it down in a notebook and she would show it to him and then he would respond. And so uh, we were recording him telling stories, which according to him, no one had ever recorded him telling stories in Shingit before. And I think he told five of them. And then uh, we asked him, uh, Ishmael asked him, what do learners of Klingit need to hear? And then he just gave this wonderful speech. The whole, the whole thing is great. Uh, but then it ends with this part. And he had a, a watch on and he had these bracelets on. He had a coffee cup so you could hear his cup kind of rattling and, and his, his bracelets kind of hitting the table. And then uh, he gets up to this part. And I remember just sitting there watching him, you know, and I can understand pretty much everything he said, but then when he got to this part, he said, and then he clenches his fist and he says, I was just, I was like, that's it. That was it. It was the mountaintop. And that was the last, that was the last thing he said. It was the last time we recorded him. Um, you know, we were going to record him a couple months later, but he, he fell and, and he never really recovered from his fall. But it, it's just, uh, again, wonderful things to think about. And this, the work that you folks are doing and going to do is answering these prayers and these thoughts. Okay. Could you come again? I'm. I kind of miss. So I got like it is my prayer for us to do something about the language, but yeah. So is basically my prayer will be this. So that's what this this next that's what this verb is doing, saying it will be this. And then he says forever let it exist. And this form of a verb is really important. Like if you really study those old raven stories in Shingit, raven talks in these hortative verbs and then those things happen. He sort of talks them into being. So there, there's all kinds of examples. Like he'll say, um, like let me float to a fine sand and then, then he will. And so um, it was probably nachshahash. Um, and so like when, when we learn these forms of shingit, and, and the reason why we're starting with stuff like this, because one time uh, Nora and Richard Dauenhauer wrote a paper and the paper, they said, uh, well, we don't think shingit is gonna die. We think it'll live but we think everybody's gonna talk like really simple. Nobody's gonna know how to do this big stuff that the old, old timers did. So if you were a person who was selected to give speeches and to tell stories, you knew how to do these things like this. It's kind of high level grammar stuff, right? But 
we can teach you how to do those things. It's a building block approach, right? So we are going to take a building block approach. We're going to sort of, and, and so we'll do a little bit of everything here. Um, but then, and then there's other folks who've been learning for a long time who you, you just got to connect with each other because most people in the world, you know, if there's only 40 speakers left, that means not very many people are talking about the, the ins and outs of what it takes to become a speaker of Klingit. So that's who you've got to hang out with. Not to say you got to say goodbye to everybody else, but you just got to share your time so that you're, you're spending time with learners. Is there a question? Uh, yeah, um, can you, can you uh, briefly like re-explain what you meant by like a hortative verb? Yeah, so a hortative in English is sort of like saying, uh, like the Beatles song, let it be. Uh, so when you say, uh, let's go, let's eat, th those are hortatives. So it's kind of a command form, but it's also uh, let it snow. There's another song, right? And, and so you're saying like, let it happen. That's a hortative verb. And so they're, they're not too complicated, I don't think, in English. You just say, oh man, let it, let it arrive today. Let it, let it be that way. And, and so, but whenever you're saying that, you're sort of, you're trying to wish it into being, or you're trying to sort of, um, when you say like, let's go, you're just, it's a command form for the group. But in Klingit, yeah, in Klinge, there's a certain way that you construct these. Uh, and like when you hear, if you hear people say yen uh, kati or yach nakati, like those are, those are the hortative forms or nachtu at, let's go. And so one of the things that you'll learn eventually is how to put those things together. And so it requires, a, you know, basically think it a, a verb and we're going to take a look at a verb tomorrow. Just like, here's a verb. It's, it's got a set of things. And then there's these little things that you can activate to get them to, to move in a certain direction. Basically say, if you wanna have this sort of, say it's already happened, you gotta have this thing plus this thing. If you wanna say it's going to happen, this thing plus this thing plus this thing. And for a hortative, there's a couple of things that you're gonna sort of have in there. But yeah, so, but also like, don't get super hung up on the linguistic terms. Like I, I know we've already been talking about objects and subjects and hortatives and commands. And so there, there is a bit of a third language you learn, which is kind of grammar and linguistics. But as long as you just sort of understand, like, how do I get it to communicate to this thing? Uh, I don't want you to feel like you need to know all of this stuff in order to speak Klingit. So just to, 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 to bring what we've just been talking about together, is it correct to say that the, this hortative form is uh, like to summon something into being, to make it manifest. Yeah. Okay. And, and so sometimes it's a, it's a basic thing, like let's go. But then sometimes it's a bigger thing. Like um, there, there's all kinds of stories. This little uh, porcupine gets stranded on a, on a beaver's house. And he says, let the lake freeze, let the lake freeze. And then it does. <laughs> That's what happens. Awesome. Well, uh, this, is a, this is a good start. You know, so we looked at sort of like four sentences and we spent about an hour just sort of going through and, and just sort of just trying to sort of look at what we've been left with. So even though there's, there's very few speakers of Klingit right now, we have mountains of Klingit. We have books and recordings and uh, probably, probably a thousand hours of recorded Klingit out there. It's one of the most well-documented languages out there. It, it, it has some tricky components. There's some things that are challenging about learning Klingit. Uh, however, you just keep going with, with these steps and then next thing you know, you'll be understanding stuff and you'll be starting to put some things together. But for you, I would say, the primary challenge is to make sure it's a language of daily use. And that means you've got to find people to talk to and you've got to find ways to use it. And sometimes it's annoying. Like, you know, I've been around people and they're like, what? I was like, oh, I was just trying to figure out how I would say this and think it. 
Like, oh, I thought you're talking to me. Do I not matter? I was like, of course you matter. But I just think about this stuff all the time because I want to figure out how to use the language. And then when you get together with other language folks, you can just really geek out with each other and just really sort of challenge yourselves. And you have to continually challenge yourself and you have to continually commit to changing the whole narrative so that we're not uh, overly critical of each other. We're not trying to tear, tear each other down, but we're trying to just sort of lift everybody uh, out of the icy waters and into the nice warm boats and then to just sort of be with each other. And so to, to help us with that, we look at the words of, of these elders who, uh, who they knew their time was short. They knew they had things to share with us. And uh, we were just lucky that, that folks were there to listen and to record them. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more tomorrow about what kinds of resources are out there. And then we'll, we'll back way up and just look at a clinket verb and make how to make the sounds. And, um, but we'll also just converse a little bit and we'll see if we got any tips from the, from the salty veterans of the deep waters who want to sort of share some of their study techniques and secrets with us. So good cheese, everybody. It's great to see uh, 70 of us here and uh, we'll see you folks tomorrow. Same link, same time. Good cheese. Good night, cheese. Good night, cheese. Good night, cheese. I'm just amazed we made it through all the introductions and actually had something to do after. Just had to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we had a few people who probably didn't introduce themselves, which is fine. But uh, yeah, we, we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. <laughs> to yay, Costine. Uh, yeah, quite Christine. 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 Uh, Are they eight seven?